Yeah, so good morning. Welcome to Morning Worship at All Saints Church, Wellington. Uh, my name's David. Um, I'm the curate at the church and it's great to be welcoming you, whether you're one of the regular church family or whether you've just found us by mistake or whether over the last few weeks you've found family here with us. It's so good to have you. We welcome you um, and we pray that as we gather this morning, um, even though we might still feel that this is a bit strange, we might know God's presence and we might know Jesus with us. All the words you need will be on the screen um, appearing here or on, on my left. Um, that, that include the words of the songs and all the liturgy and the prayers and things like that. And I'd invite you, if the words are in bold, to join in. Even if you're there, um, maybe if you're by yourself, to join in, to speak them out. So collectively, together, even though we might all be scattered, we're together worshipping and praising Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord uh, of Lords. So before we start, maybe just a moment of stillness. That's not always easy, is it, with little ones if you're there with them? I know that. That's absolutely fine. But just a moment to still ourselves and to say, come Holy Spirit, and then we'll say a prayer together. Let's pray. So come Holy Spirit. We, we give you this time, we give you this morning to speak to us. Wherever we are, come Holy Spirit, fall on us, we pray. So we say together, the words in bold. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, to inspire our prayer and to shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to begin with a song. And I know sometimes it's quite strange singing, isn't it? I and mean, you might be tempted to just sit and, and, and watch it and not join in because it is a bit weird. But I invite you to join in. Um, if you're someone that stands up in church and, and, and gets quite into it, I invite you to do that. If you're someone that would just prefer to sit and be still and, and reflect on the words and spend time with the Holy Spirit like that, that's fine too. But we're going to sing together our first song, Everyone Needs Compassion. Thank you. 
Amen. He did indeed rise and conquer the grave. He can move the mountains. That's the saviour we gather to worship this morning. And as we do gather to worship, I don't know about you, but, but I'm so aware of the times that this week, this morning, that I've, I've missed it. That times that I haven't met the mark that Jesus calls us to have. But remember last week when we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus, that he invites us into a relationship with the Father uh, and he forgives us our sin. And when he died on the cross, he took it all away, all the bad stuff we did and the mistakes that we make. And so we're going to spend some time now thinking of that and confessing it to God, confessing to the Lord those times when we've missed the mark. So we confess our sin and the sin of our society in the misuse of God's creation. So God our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and we've acted ungratefully. Would you hear our prayer? And in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. And we belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but we ignore the cry of the hungry. Maybe a moment to reflect on those words as we think of the COVID-19 virus and the impact it's having across the world in places that aren't um, as lucky as we are, as fortunate as we are to have the equipment and the infrastructure we do. So, Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care for the world you've made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. And here's the good news, and I read it out from Micah 7, 7, 7, 18, sorry. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sin underfoot. You will hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So if there are um, younger people around, uh, maybe this is the time to kind of gather around the screen a bit more than you would usually. You have got some activities to be doing. Uh, Caroline's put some really good ideas on our Facebook page. Uh, and so do have a look at them. You don't need to print them off. They hopefully are things that can be done with the stuff around the house. And we'd love you to, once you've made them, take a photo. And if you message them maybe to me or even on the comment stream, I don't know if you can do that. And we'd love to be able to share them if that's possible. We have some amazing photos from last week that I'll try and put up soon. So this, this day, today, we're thinking of hope. And my sermon later on my talk is going to be about what it means to have hope. But I want to share a story with you. We're going to watch a really short video of a story of a, of a chap from the Bible who was in a place where he could have easily had not had any hope. He could have given up. But we saw that God rescued him and how important it is to always have hope in Jesus. So let's watch this story. and despair hope is there 
find it somewhere. Hope is always there. His friends they knelt in prayer, amazed he was there. They'd thought that Peter would die. His chains lay. The sea looks dark before you. Never forget, never forget. There is always hope for a stranger, a bringer of good news. There is always hope for an answer. When we are confused, in pain or in darkness, in sadness and despair. Sing and 
say God's love is big, God's love is strong, God's love goes on and on and on. God's love surrounds me every day, and I love to sing and say, God loves me. The first reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, a greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, okay, um, apologies that that kid song went straight into the reading, but to be honest, oh, I just needed to sit down. Uh, but thanks, Peter, for giving us your reading. I'm still recovering. Hopefully you are getting in with the actions as well. Um, I don't know what I think about being equated to Hugh Grant, but thanks, Liz. I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that. He's a, he's a good chap. He's got lots of money as well, doing quite well. Um, probably not because of his dancing, though, but, but thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Peter, for our reading. And we're going to sing another song now. So if you, if you want to stand, if you're comfortable to do so, you can. Um, if not, let's just sit and worship God together with, with the King of my heart.
Yes, Heavenly Father, you are good. And our prayer is that you would be the king of our hearts, that you'd be the wind in our sail. So Lord, now as we hear our second reading, come Holy Spirit, would you speak to us through your word, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Reach out your hand and put okay, um, so apologies, I've just found out that there's no sound, but because of the delay, it would have meant that you've had to watch about one minute of, of, uh, of no sound, so apologies for that. But uh, hopefully you can hear me, uh, and I will read to you the Gospel reading. Uh, sorry about that, Ali. Ali read it very nicely for us, but, um, but there we go, but, but I will read it not as well as she did. But it's from John, and we're reading at chapter 19, sorry, yeah, chapter 19, verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sin, they are not, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the, the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe it. A week later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. So I've popped upstairs to share some thoughts on um, our readings today, especially the readings on 1 Peter. Uh, so you might want to make sure you've got it up on your phone or in your paper version um, as we begin. And let's pray before we start. Father God, this morning we pray against any distraction. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to us this morning through your word. We are ready, Lord God, to be challenged by you to learn more about you to become better disciples of yours. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So like I said, we're going to focus mainly today on this book of 1 Peter. And for those of you with one of these versions, a paper Bible, uh, you might have struggled to find it. Let's be honest, put your hand up um, if you needed to flick into the contents page to find where 1 Peter was. It's a tiny little letter, isn't it? It's tucked away right at the back of the New Testament. It comes after the chunky books of, of Hebrews and of James, um, and it's the beginning of a set of smaller little letters. If you've got one of these thin Bibles, um, you might have just skipped over it by mistake. Blink and you miss it. But we miss it out, I think, to our detriment. 
Martin Luther was one of, was one of the great reformer theologians. And he said this of one Peter. He said it's one of the most significant and convicting works of the New Testament. I've also heard it equated as being like one of those small stones that you get stuck in your shoe. You know, you might be going for a walk, maybe a long hike up a hill, and you have this really small stone jabbing away at the softness of your heel or onto your foot, and it stops you in your tracks. It doesn't matter how small it is, it stops you. And I want to argue, in many ways, that's like one Peter, a small book that packs a big bite. Maybe another way of looking at it, and so you might look at this and think, well, that's a bit little, isn't it? It's a bit small. I prefer a big posh latte or an Americano. But actually, it's the espresso that packs the punch. It does. Not, of course, that, that some scripture is more powerful than others. It's all God breathed. This entire book contains all things necessary for salvation. But my point is, though, that, that um. That it's small, but that doesn't mean it's irrelevant. It's all God breathed, this entire book. But one of the reasons that this particular book, I think, is so helpful for us today is because it speaks into a context so similar to us. Um, uh, so, so Peter was written um, by Peter, or, or at least dictated by him, maybe, and, and scribed by Silas. And, and cleverer people than me ha have kind of dated it to around 64 AD. And it's written to a scattered people. And what's really interesting, we talked about this at our Bible study on Wednesday night. Heather made this really great point. Heather pointed out that, that, that there is a suggestion that for many of these people who are scattered, we see them um, in verse one from all these different places. For many of these people who are currently scattered on the day of Pentecost, there's every chance they would have been together in Jerusalem. When the Holy Spirit came, they were together. They might not have known each other then, but they were together. And that's when they started to speak in other tongues and understand each other. So isn't that amazing that, that the suggestion is that they were gathered together at Pentecost and now they're scattered in different places, unable to see each other, maybe due to the persecution that's starting or, or is only going to increase. And we're not really undergoing persecution at the moment, are we, as Christians? But, but we're under attack of some sort by, by fear, by COVID-19, by loneliness. And like the recipients of this letter in 1 Peter, uh, we find ourselves, many of us, that once we were gathered together, we might look back to those times when we were in church together, in the church building together, and we were gathered together like those people in Pentecost. But now we're all over the place. We're scattered all over the place. And like them, maybe we're worried about the future. Maybe we're fearful. Maybe we're worried about what's going to happen. So this little letter from nearly 2,000 years ago can speak directly, I think, into our situation. And I want to concentrate, if I can, on verse 3 and verse 4. And this is what it says. In his great mercy... In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope from the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fate. This morning, I wonder what your hope is. This, what I'm hoping is that, that this carries on working and I also hope that you can hear me. I don't know if you can because no one said they can, but I assume you can. Maybe my wife will nod at me and tell me that she can hear me. But I wonder what you're hoping for. Hope is a good thing, right? Listen to these headlines, recent headlines. Prime Minister Boris Johnson spoke about how his government hopes herd immunity would be able to stop the spread of COVID-19 in the UK. Another one, coronavirus cure hopes as firm claims vaccine for deadly COVID-19 ready in weeks. Another one, hope is growing that COVID-19 peak will come soon. If I said to you, what do you hope? It's a funny question, isn't it? And here we come along to the Morrison's delivery lorry. See, I was prepared for it not working because I've got my Morrison's delivery lorry. So when I wrote my sermon, we had a delivery come in that night. 
And currently, my hope, when I, when I was writing this, my hope was that we didn't have any swaps. We're very lucky to be able to get our shopping delivered, but sometimes when something is replaced with something else, um, it's not particularly good. So I was hoping, for example, that when the Morrison's delivery lorry came, I would get some yummy things like Cadbury buttons, and hopefully not a half-eaten carrot. You can tell what little A likes to snack on in the fridge. And I thought to myself while I was writing my sermon, not that I get distracted, I thought to myself, let's Google what amazing uh, responses there have been, uh, what amazing swaps there have been in the past. And here's what I found. So I found out that there was, there was one person that ordered tequila and got sticky tape. There was someone that ordered bananas and got potatoes, someone ordered shepherd's pie and got shower gel, and my particular favourite, someone ordered rye bread and got an all-in-one black swimsuit. These people didn't get what they were hoping for. I hope when my bacon arrived that it's not replaced by broccoli. Good news, it wasn't. I finished it this morning with a bacon and egg sandwich. But you know what? No matter how hard I hope, that doesn't make any difference, does it? I can hope as much as I want my bacon won't be, re won't be replaced by lentils. But if they haven't got any bacon, it's going to be replaced by lentils. So my internal feeling, my desire, has no impact on an external reality. Either Morrisons will have bacon or they won't. So often our hope is just that, a wish, an aspiration. But here in our scripture reading, 1 Peter challenges that. He says we have new birth into a living hope. And he says this living hope is through the resurrection of Jesus and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. I went to Gas Street last year and Nicky Drake talked about living hope and he talked about it being like a hammock and I've had an amazing picture of, of, that's been sent in uh, of some hammocks that have been made that, make, that are between two palm trees and Nicky Drake talks about our living hope being that hammock between the resurrection of Jesus in one palm tree and uh, the inheritance that we have in the other. Without either tree our hammock would be pretty useless. And last week we celebrated that palm tree, didn't we? We celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. And really every week we celebrate it. Every week we celebrate that our King of Kings is alive, that he's the, the living Lord, the resurrected Redeemer. So today I'm going to focus on the inheritance, on that side of the hammock, on that palm tree. That's part of our living hope. You see, our hope is more than an aspiration or a wish. It's more than what the Morrison's delivery man is going to bring me. And Peter here reminds us that it's not just based on the Easter story. It's not just based on the Easter story. It definitely is based on the resurrection, but it doesn't stop there. Salvation is not, I think, a, a one-off event. God's saving act on the cross was definitely a one-off event. But we are challenged by Peter, for example, by Paul, for example, in the letter to the Philippians, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, to work it out. And in fact, that came up in my Bible reading plan yesterday. And I think that, you know, if God repeats himself, maybe he's trying to tell us something. So our salvation is, is a living hope. And it comes from the cross and the resurrection, but it doesn't stop there. It's a journey. It's a journey. So salvation is past. It's in the past. We read, and it's up on the screen, in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. We have been adopted. We've been justified. We've been made holy. We've been welcomed into God's family. Hallelujah. That has happened. But salvation is also present. In 1 Corinthians 1.18 we read, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. Us who are being saved, it's a process. We continually be sanctified. I don't know about you, but I'm not there yet. But I'm being made holy. I'm, in a, I'm becoming more and more like Jesus. And salvation is future. We read in Romans 8, uh, sorry, Romans 5, chapter 9, 
that having now been justified through his blood, we shall be saved. We shall be saved from wrath through him. So we have been saved. We are being saved and we shall be saved. And we're going to think a bit about that as we come into land. Some final thoughts. What is this shall be saved? What is this inheritance that is kept in heaven for us that we read in 1 Peter verse 4? Kept in heaven. John Calvin wrote this. He says, we do not have the full of enjoyment of it at present. He said, we walk in hope, but we do not see the things. We see them by faith. So our inheritance then is this, it's all that God has promised us in salvation. It's all that God has promised us in salvation. And we see the fullness of this maybe right at the back of our Bible, right at the back in Revelation. Revelation 21, it says, the dwelling of God is with man, he will live with them, they will be his people, God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be no more death, no more mourning or crying or pain. Sounds good, doesn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's part of our inheritance, that we will dwell with him forever. Everything will be renewed, made new. The river of life flowing from God's throne. And I love the fact that the tree of life is growing there. We read of that tree of life all the way back in the story of Genesis. And it's here, it's bookending the whole narrative of, of scripture, the whole story of salvation, the tree of life that God wants to bring life to us. But... But our inheritance is not just life in heaven when we die. It's not just that. If that's what we think our inheritance is, we're doing it a disservice. Our inheritance, our living hope, is for now. It's for today. Yes, the fullness of it is kept in heaven. We read that in verse 4. And we read that elsewhere. We read in Matthew 6, 20, of storing up treasures in heaven. Ephesians 1, 13, points of an inheritance that we're yet to acquire. But we hold that with the fact that actually often Western Christianity or our society makes the assumption of this word heaven that doesn't help. If I said to you heaven, the first thing that probably comes to mind is if it's all about where we go to when we die. It's about salvation when we die. But really interestingly, there's actually almost nothing in the New Testament about heaven just being a place that we go to when we die. But there is lots about the resurrection, being all about the fact that he is risen. That God's new world begins today. We don't have to sit around waiting. Yes, we look forward to that day when Jesus returns, that the heavens and earth are renewed and we see him face to face and we enjoy his presence. The fullness of our inheritance. Yes, we can't wait. But, but Tom Wright points out that it's more. He says this in his book, Surprised by Hope. He says, Jesus' resurrection is more than the insurance of heaven after death. He says, Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of God's new project to, to colonise earth with the life of heaven. He points out that whenever we say the Lord's Prayer, that's what we're saying. Lord, your kingdom come. He, we don't say, Lord, your kingdom come when we die. We say, Lord, your kingdom come now. Your rule, your reign, your power, your authority, your glory, come now. Come now, let us glimpse it. Let us see it. So another way of looking at it might be that, that heaven is the place where God's purposes for the future are stored up. But they don't have to stay there. Another analogy by Tom Wright is that if, the, if you came around my house and I said to you, oh, I've, I've got a beer waiting in the fridge for you, you probably wouldn't say, oh, thanks, and just leave it there. And you wouldn't hop into the fridge and drink it there, would you? You'd open the fridge, you'd take it out, you'd crack it, and you'd enjoy it. So we're able to enjoy the kingdom of God here on earth. Not in its fullness. Yes, through a fog dimly, but we're still able to enjoy some of the, the down payment, if you like, some of the deposit. So we're in that hammock. We're between those two palm trees of the resurrection and the inheritance. But my encouragement is, is not to rest too much in that hammock because there's kingdom work to be done. The Bible tells us this in 1 Corinthians, and 2 Corinthians 1.22. God has given us his Holy Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. 
Paul reminds us that yes, one day we will see Jesus face to face. And if you like, that's the fullness of our inheritance. But until then, the Holy Spirit, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit, we read of that in our gospel reading in John, peace be with you, God, Jesus breathing his spirit on his disciples. Until then, the coming of the Holy Spirit is like a down payment. Another way of looking at it might be like an engagement ring. Those of us that maybe have been engaged and have been married, that engagement ring points to a future event that we, that we long for and we look forward to. But it doesn't diminish the relationship. It still speaks of a special relationship. It talks about um, something special being shared. It's like a down payment that's paid as a pledge for the greater payment. Jesus, his Holy Spirit, his voice saying to us, peace be with you. I don't know how you're feeling this morning, but I pray that you might hear his Holy Spirit right now speaking to you saying, peace be with you. Do not fear that even though we might be surrounded by walls in our homes, his Holy Spirit, as Jesus did, comes through those walls and says, peace be with you. In the midst of fear, in the midst of our lockdown, of our worry, just like the disciples were, God says, peace be with you. So as we come into land, I'm sorry for a bit of a long one this morning, especially because you couldn't hear the first five minutes of it. But as we come into land, this is our living hope. Our living hope is that we belong to him. As Peter said in verse five, we are shielded by his power until the coming of salvation. There it is again, salvation also in the future. We are shielded by his power. This morning, you might not feel very powerful, but let's pray for more of his Holy Spirit, more of his anointing, that we might see more of his kingdom in our lives. Our living hope is that we have an inheritance and it's unperishable, it's unspoiled, it's unfading. And isn't that good news? In a world where, where buildings fade, where political systems fade and decay, where our bodies decay, we have a living hope. We have an inheritance. We have a heavenly inheritance that will never fade. And part of that is that one day we will be resurrected from the dead into bodies that are incorruptible to be with Jesus forever. My friends, if anything else, isn't that good news this morning that we can say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We have living hope that this inheritance isn't just pie in the sky when we die, but that through God's Holy Spirit today, the reality of having a relationship with Jesus, he invites us to accept his words. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. If you need some peace this morning, just pray, come Holy Spirit, can I have some peace? We have the living hope that this Holy Spirit is a spirit of peace, but also a spirit of power. We maybe were shielded by his power. And we live in the now and the not yet of the, of the kingdom, that we have a bit of our inheritance, but the fullness is yet to come. But we're still challenged to pray for, to, to heal the sick. We're challenged to cast out demons, to set captives free, to speak prophetically into situations. I wonder if maybe you spend time with Jesus and you say, Lord, give me an encouraging word for someone today. Maybe next time you go into a shop and, and you speak to a shopkeeper that, that might be fearful, you can say, look, can I pray for God's peace to be with you, remembering our gospel reading, that we pray for, to see a bit of our inheritance here on earth, that we pray to see a bit of our living hope here on earth. So my friends this morning, we end with, with resting in that hammock between the resurrection and our inheritance. But like I said, let's not rest too deeply. Let's not get too comfy because there's kingdom work to be done. So we're challenged to continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And we pray that after understanding how great our living hope is, that we might encourage others that we might encourage others out there who need to know that they are loved by the King of Kings, who need to know that there's a living hope there for them. So let's pray together. Let's pray. Maybe just a moment to, to say, come Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts. You might want to, at home, just put your hands out as a symbol of receiving that peace from him, that Holy Spirit from him.
And I really sense this morning that for some of us, I mean, we all need peace, but for some of us, maybe that's been crippling, that idea of not having peace. Maybe you've just tuned in this morning um, and it's been your first time and you've heard of this peace that Jesus gives you and you need some of that. So if that's you this morning, would you say this prayer after me? You can say it out loud or in your hearts. You say, Lord Jesus, please, can I have some peace? Come Holy Spirit, presence of God, I pray for your peace. Take away my worries and my fears, help me to rest, rest in the living hope that you are a resurrected King and you're the coming King, those two palm trees. And for those of us that have, have known you a long time, Jesus, we pray for more of your kingdom to come, for more of your inheritance to fall, for more of your spirit to come, for more people to come to know you love them, for more words of knowledge and, and prophecy to be spoken out, for more people to be set free through the power of your spirit who are bound by addiction, by fear, by the evil one. So as we continue to sing of our living hope, I invite you to continue spending time with Jesus and inviting him uh, to speak to you. And if maybe you've said that prayer for peace for the first time, I'd encourage you after this service to get in touch, to go to the Zoom room um, and uh, we can talk to you about what it means to getting to know Jesus more as your friend and your king of saying sorry, of turning around and following him. But we're going to sing of that living hope right now. Let's sing. Savior, I'm yours forever. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We bless you. We love you. We love your presence. You are indeed our living hope. So for those of us today that need to be set free from things, we pray that by your spirit, we would hear you say, peace be with us. We're going to uh, pray, continue to pray, and Margaret will be leading us in our prayers of intercession. Some words from the first letter of Peter. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. His appearance to his disciples turned their despair and dismay into joy and peace, giving them courage when they might have been afraid, hope when everything seemed to go wrong, and an overwhelming happiness when they would otherwise have known only sadness. Living in a time of uncertainty, with many fearful, sad and doubting, Come into our lives with your joy and peace, whatever our circumstances, helping us to know, though you're always with us, as you promised. Lord Jesus, you are alive forever. You are here with us now. Help us be aware of your presence. Lord Jesus, you are alive forever. You are within us now. Help us to welcome you. Lord Jesus, you are alive forever. We are still. Speak to us now. Help us to listen to you. Lord Jesus, whether we feel you near or not, you answer our prayers. You are within us. You are around us. You are always renewing us by daily friendship and guidance. We have your promise as we share your life so we share your resurrection. Thank you, Father, for our risen, reigning Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, the present situation has made a big difference to the lives of most people in this and other countries. Be with those who are lonely, with children who are missing their friends, and with their parents as they care for them. For those who have friends and relatives in care homes with whom they can longer visit, with those working on the front line and their families, and for those in hospital. And lastly, for those who are grieving, especially those who are unable to attend the funeral of their loved ones. May each one, in their different circumstances, be aware of your love surrounding them and your peace in their hearts. And we ask this in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, whose love sets no boundaries, and whose strength is in service, Grant to the leaders of the nations wisdom, courage and insight in this time of uncertainty. Help them to know when it is safe to allow people to return to work and to be willing to help other countries in their hour of need. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray today for African Inland Mission, one of our mission agencies. Lord, be with each member of Africa Inland Mission as they carry out their work. Help them in whatever circumstance they find themselves, often working with inadequate equipment, not having all the medication they need, and often having nowhere to isolate infectious patients. May they be aware of the Holy Spirit, enabling them to show your healing love to whom they serve. And we ask this in your name. Amen. And Father, we think of those in the refugee camps, for those who need help, Father, be with them on all who are supplying their help. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And in a moment of quiet, I encourage you to add your own prayers. Whatever's facing you for the coming week, whatever perhaps you're worried about, or who you're worried about. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
Uh, so before we hear um, from uh, Liz uh, Lawson, who's going to share a testimony with us, a story of God's goodness, we're going to come together um, and say the prayer that Jesus taught us. I'm going to say a line and I invite you to repeat it after me. Um, if you'd like prefer to say it in a different language or a different version, please feel free. That's absolutely fine. Now, little ones, if you're at home, you can join in as well. You can say this as loud as you would like to. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. We prayed um, towards the end, your kingdom come. And we thought about that in, in earlier, didn't we? The inheritance, our heavenly inheritance coming, the rule and reign of Jesus coming on earth. Um, and Liz uh, has got a story uh, of just that happening. So over to you, Liz. So I'd like to tell you about an answer to prayer that we've had in our family over the last few months. Um, our son, Pete, and his wife, Mel, and their two children have lived in Guildford for the past three years. They were hoping to extend their house and drew up plans and applied for planning permission. However, their neighbour, we'll call him Kay, was very unfriendly and he objected at every stage, despite having done a similar extension himself. Kay instructed a solicitor to help fight the planning application and tried to get the other neighbours to object too. He went round to Pete's house several times in a very angry mood and swore at him and would often slam his doors and be rude whenever he saw them. Mel did not like to go in the garden at all and would not leave the house if Kay was in his front garden. The plans were eventually passed and this made Kay even more angry. Pete started to find a builder but we felt that Kay would continue to fight everything that was done and it would probably end in a legal dispute. We were visiting one weekend last November and we felt strongly that they should try to move house. That night, Mel woke up and felt God say to her that she should read Psalm 20. She said to me, this doesn't normally happen to her at all. Anyway, the first lines of that Psalm are May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. They'd already looked on right move and not found any suitable houses. But that next morning we looked again and a new house had just come on the market in a place called Jacob's Well, just outside Guildford. This seemed a very prophetic place and the house looked great, but it was outside their price range. That afternoon, I went for a walk with Mel and the children, and Mel was saying to me that if they moved, then Ian would miss fishing on the private fishing lake behind their current house. We were walking in some woods, and we saw a large lake there too, so I said that Ian could fish there. We walked on, and we saw a bench, and it had an inscription on it which read, For Ian. The following day, we went to church, and during the worship, Pete Gregg, who's their pastor, went to the front and said that he felt there were people in church who needed to hear that God said to continue to worship him in the midst of their difficulties, and he would bring them through. They went to see the house and loved it, and it had already got all the space that they would have got from their proposed extension and more. The people selling the house were splitting up and they were prepared to take a lower price. And three weeks later, Pete and Mel had sold their house. 
The difficulties continued with Kay, and the legal process of buying and selling was very protracted, compounded by the outbreak of coronavirus. Eventually, they exchanged and completed on Maundy Thursday, which again seems very prophetic, in that day being the one that commemorates God rescuing his people from their oppressors. The new house is wonderful, and their new next-door neighbours are Christians who had been praying for a Christian family to move in. So we praise and thank God for his wonderful faithfulness. Amen. Yes, we do. And you know what? That's so good to hear. Isn't it good to hear a story of, of God's kingdom coming, of prayer being answered, of, of, of amazing things happening that are that backing up, that we're hearing God right and, and, and walking in his way. Um, and if you've got a story of God's goodness you'd like to share with us, we'd love to hear some more stories. They don't have to be, they don't have to be like Peter's escape from prison and the angels helping with chains dropping off. They could be that dramatic. But it could just be a story of how through the years you've known God's faithfulness with you. And we can either record you or you can send it to me um, and I can read it out. Um, we, can, we can even anonymise them if you'd like. Now, we're coming to the end of our service together. Um, I hope you've had a really good time. It's been really good to worship with you. We are going to have some Zoom rooms afterwards. So here are some numbers to jot down if you'd like to. Um, if anything's been coming up that you'd like prayer for in the top, um, we've got some people who, who can pray for you. Um, if, as you, we've been talking, you've been hearing about Jesus and you think, he sounds um, really interesting. I want to know more about what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. And we've got a room for that as well. Um, if you just want a general catch up and to see lots of people's faces, then we've got the general catch up room. And Caroline, uh, again, will be uh, um, hosting a kids Zoom room for the children to see each other and to catch up. And I'm sure there'll be lots of silly things for them to do as well. Now, before we have our final song and a final blessing, um, and the notices, of course. Well, well, we'll do the notices now, actually. But I'm a bit worried about doing this because it might start a precedence. But Peggy Taylor is a very special person in our church. She has been a minister here, here with us for a very long time. She's ministered um, here for years. Um, and so I think we're going to sing happy birthday to her. I don't know how it's going to go with my guitar and live streaming, but you know what? I don't, I don't think it matters. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Peggy. Um, happy birthday to you. I don't know if she's watching. I'm sure Richard can make sure that she will. And to anyone else's birthday it is today, this is for you as well. You know, we can't do this every week. We could. That'd be quite good fun, wouldn't it? Right, happy birthday to Peggy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Peggy, happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, every day of the year may you feel Jesus near. Happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, and the best one you've ever had. Happy birthday, Peggy. Thanks so much for joining us. So before we have our last song, uh, just some notices for you. They were scrolling around at the beginning of the service. But if you've missed anything um, or you want to watch something again, do uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's all the, We put all the services on there. You'll even be able to catch up if you want to with the first version of the sermon I did and compare and contrast to see if I changed my mind. Um, and you'll notice a few differences maybe. Um, but they're all on our YouTube channel. Um, you can subscribe to our podcasts. So there are talks and we put them on our website if you'd prefer just to listen while you're maybe doing something and then you can do that. Uh, something we've recently started doing, we've introduced some food bank donation drop-off points. Um, the food bank have lost lots of volunteers recently because lots of the volunteers are those that need to self-isolate. They've also lost lots of food being dropped off because um, lots of the food donation points are in supermarkets and they're in churches uh, and they're not being used um, anymore. So there's a, quite a few of us have said that we'll happily take food donations on our doorstep. Um, I'm, I'm kind of the central point, the, the, the person that can take them to the food bank and other people are bringing them to me, thanks very much. You're welcome to take them to the food bank yourself at Dorley or at Maidley, um, but we're trying to make it as safe for you as possible to do so. And if you can't get out, but you, um, you'd normally give to food bank, drop me a message and we'll see what you can do in terms of donating um, and me doing the shopping for you and how we can do that safely. 
I think that's all the notices to say, apart from the fact that we can see you again on Wednesday night for Bible study next Sunday. And if you're not following our Facebook page, please do so. Um, that would be great. And um, we'll hopefully we'll see you after the service in one of these rooms. But before we have our final blessing, let's sing together. Thank you, Debbie and Richard.
Well, thanks so much for joining us. Amen to that. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Um, we've had one picture being sent in. Look at that. That's from the McKinnon. That's amazing. We've got the two palm trees here and we've got our hope in the middle. Happy days. That hope that we have between resurrection and the fullness of our inheritance. Okay, shall we say a prayer to end with? and hopefully see you in some of the Zoom rooms. In, in, in a minute, I'll put the image back so that all you can see is what the Zoom rooms are. In fact, let me do that now. I just wanted to show you that picture, really. There we go. So we'll say a prayer of blessing, and then we'll be, I'll be closing this down, but we'd love to see you on Zoom. So Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our gathering together this morning. And Lord, we pray that whatever this day holds, we go with your living hope, that we would see your kingdom come, that we'd be, we would be a people of hope. We pray for your protection, your blessing on us and those that we love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, those of you who can, have got eagle ears can probably hear my uh, four-year-old in the background having made cakes during church. Um, be interesting to see what they're like. But it's been go so good to see you. Um, I think I'll be closing this down in a couple of minutes. Um, and it's been great to see you. See you in Zoom. See you next week. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>